Welcome back to Wildcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the latest update in the U.S. versus Maxwell case. And that is because Gill and Maxwell's side has filed their papers requesting the lowest possible sentence under the statute from the judge. As you guys know, Gillian Maxwell was convicted late last year in December of 2021, and her sentencing is scheduled for June 28th, which is coming up in a couple weeks. And the uh, government side will be turning over their recommendations for what the sentence should be. And Gillian Maxwell's side will also be turning over their recommendations. And as you can imagine, they, they're asking the judge to go easy on Gillian Maxwell and give her the lowest possible sentence. OK, so let's go over the details here. So this, this was filed yesterday on the 15th. Uh, it is a sentencing memorandum on behalf of Gillian Maxwell by her lawyers asking for uh, the judge to consider going significantly below what the probation department has requested that Gillian Maxwell get. So for the crimes that Gillian Maxwell was convicted, the federal sentencing guidelines um, say that she should get somewhere between 292 to 365 months. That's 24 to 30 years. Uh, and the probation department recommends she get somewhere uh, around the 20-year number, 240 months. That's 20 years. Gillian Maxwell's side is asking for a significant decrease from both those numbers. So they don't want, they definitely don't want this, 24 to 30, and they don't even want this one. Okay, so this is what they say. We request that the court grant Ms. Maxwell a significant variance below the advisory sentencing guidelines of 24 to 30 years and below the 20-year sentence recommended by the probation department. And then they go on to, you know, uh, weave a tale of woe about how she is being persecuted because the government was unable to punish Jeffrey Epstein and their entire letter which I'm going to just summarize for you guys, but they go on to lay down what happened in Florida and how they failed to get him there. And that's the reason that the uh, Southern District of New York prosecutors decided to even go after uh, Gillian Maxwell because they couldn't punish Jeffrey Epstein. So it's the same tale of woe that they always had, which is that claiming that she's being persecuted because the government failed to get Jeffrey Epstein. So they're using her as a scapegoat. This is the line that they've had, and that's what they're using to justify this lower sentence. Okay, so let me read you guys a little bit of what they said here uh, in the summary. Gillian Maxwell stands before the court because of her association with Jeffrey Epstein decades ago in the 1990s to uh, and early 2000s. Never before uh, that time and never again in the roughly 20 year period since the conduct underlying this case occurred has Miss uh, Maxwell ever been accused of a crime. That's technically true. That doesn't mitigate what she did with Jeffrey Epstein, which is what they're trying to do. They're trying to mitigate that in the mind of the judge, much less a scheme to sexually abuse minors. The witnesses at trial testified about Ms. Maxwell's facilitation of Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's abuse, but Epstein was always the central figure. Also true, factually speaking. Epstein was the mastermind. Epstein was the principal abuser, and Epstein orchestrated the crimes for his personal gratification. All true. OK, she helped. But nevertheless, I do agree with that interpretation. There are some people who don't agree. Maria Farmer, for example, thinks that Gillian Maxwell was the mastermind. That's ridiculous. Jeffrey Epstein was clearly the mastermind. There's no evidence to support that Max. It would have happened uh, with uh, without the uh, presence of uh, Jeffrey Epstein. She might have been a central figure who helped him. But nevertheless, he was the central figure. OK, that's a fact you cannot get around just because we don't like her. We should not try to, uh, you know, change the facts of history. Indeed, had Gillian Maxwell never had the profound misfortune of meeting Jeffrey Epstein over 30 years ago, she would not be here. That's true. That's also true. So uh, ironically, all the things that they say here are true. None of that mitigates uh, anything she did, in my opinion. <clears throat> and I'll I'll go over my own opinion about how the prosecutor should determine what she uh, what their recommend recommendation should be. Uh, but let's go over their crying here uh, further. Epstein avoided a significant sentence when he was first prosecuted in Florida. True uh, for these offenses and then evaded any further punishment by dying a month a month after his arrest and detention in New York. Uh, but this court cannot sentence Miss Maxwell as if she were a proxy for Epstein simply because Epstein is no longer here. Ms. Maxwell cannot and should not bear all the punishment for which Epstein should have been held responsible. That's true, but we're not punishing her for what uh, Jeffrey Epstein did. We're punishing her for what she did. Okay. If Jeffrey Epstein was on trial, she, he would have been charged with rape, which she was not charged with that. She was charged with sex trafficking and sex trafficking conspiracy. Okay. So this crap about how the Justice Department is going after her because they couldn't get Epstein is ridiculous. 
they went after her for things that she did, not things that he did. Okay. Now he was involved, but she's the one who did them. Okay. So see, they're trying to skirt responsibility by bringing up Jeffrey Epstein here and pretending like they're trying to make a scapegoat out of her. That's what they literally said. They said that she was a proxy for Epstein, a scapegoat. That's not what's happening here. Okay. We don't punish people for things that others did. We punish people for what they did. We believe in personal responsibility. That's what the Justice Department does. Ms. Maxwell has, has already experienced hard, a hard time during detention under conditions far more onerous and punitive than any experienced by a typical pretrial detainee. And she is preparing to, that's not true. Uh, many other detainees have been in the MDC and have experienced the same thing that she did. So that's just a lie. It's not accurate. Uh, she's preparing to spend significant significantly more time behind bars. Yes, she is. Her life has been ruined. That's probably true. Uh, since Epstein's death, her life has been threatened and death threats continue while she is incarcerated. I there there was a there was a story I saw before making this video um, that they they were claiming that somebody was threatening to kill her inside the prison or something. I'll look in, I'll look into that. I'll make a video if there's anything there. It would be a travesty of justice for her to face a sentence that would have been appropriate for Epstein. No, Jeffrey Epstein would have been facing like a hundred years in prison if she was if he was prosecuted. Okay. Okay, so she's facing 35 after her, her a couple of her charges were dropped because they were repetitive. She's now facing a max of 35. So she should count her count her lucky stars that she's not facing more. I guess it was just your lucky night. In its final pre-sentence investigation report, probation recommended a sentence of 240 months imprisonment, 20 years, a slight downward variance from the sentence recommended by the advisory guidelines. We have submitted objections directly to probation, which are amplif amplified in an accompanying submission. They had another uh, memorandum of law talking about why it's wrong to sentence her for that long. I'm not going to go through that. It's a waste of time. The judge is not going to listen to that either. Uh, the judge is going to listen to most likely she's going to take into account what the victims have to say, which is what she should do. We respectfully submit that in the light of the circumstances discussed below, including extraordinary punitive conditions of solitary confinement and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, a sentence below the 240 month recommended by probation would be, quote, uh, sufficient, but not greater than necessary to achieve the objectives of sentencing articulated in 18 U.S code section 3553a so bottom line they're asking for a sentence that's significantly lower than 20 years they don't actually list a number so like i said before they go on to discuss how this case got started talking about florida and what happened there and how the failures in florida led to the prosecution of uh, gillen maxwell in the southern district of new york and they go on to uh explain in detail what happened here. And the, and the whole point is to say that Gillian Maxwell has already been treated horribly and she doesn't deserve to be in uh, prison. And she's been, uh, you know, uh, used as a scapegoat for Jeffrey Epstein. That's the gist of all of this. OK, they spent pages and pages talking about that. So at the end here, uh, they provide a list of reasons why she should not be sentenced to such a high number in their opinion. And some of these reasons are valid, I would say, but I don't think that this mitigates uh, the experiences of, of the victims. So that's who the judge should be uh, listening to. So like I said, the judge is going to take into account the uh, pleadings from both sides there. She's going to look at the sentencing guidelines and what the what the prosecutors recommend and what the defense attorneys also say that their client should get. And in the end, the judge is the one who makes the decision. She can listen to or not listen to the recommendations from both sides. She, the, all she has to do is follow the law, the statute uh, that she was the statutes that she was convicted under offer the judge certain minimums and maximums. So the judge can decide to give her the full max or give her something in the middle or give, give something that's the minimum, close to the minimum for the charges. So the only thing the judge has to do is to follow the law. Okay, she doesn't necessarily have to listen to either side, but usually the judges listen to the recommendations uh, of both sides and she chooses something that's fair, usually uh, in the middle range. Okay, usually. Okay, but sometimes judges, you know, decide to go for the max if they think that the crimes were bad enough. Uh, I, I think it's going to be between uh, around 23, 25 years. So that would be my guess of what she's going to get. But um, Judge Nathan might go higher or lower. OK, depending on how serious she thinks uh, the crimes are here. But the recommendations, uh, the, the guidelines, the federal guides and guidelines recommend 24 to 30 years. The probation department recommended 20 years. So 
it's going to be 20 plus no matter what. We'll see what happens on June 28th. Uh, Gillen Maxwell side trying to blame everything on Jeffrey Epstein and saying that she's a scapegoat. This is the same story that they've had since the beginning. So that's not surprising. Uh, but nevertheless, I want to cover this because um, the sentencing recommendations are an important step uh, in the process. And I want to give you guys um, what both sides are saying. OK, so I don't know if the uh, prosecutors are also going to recommend uh, the uh, the number that the probation department gave. I would think that it would be higher for for them, but I haven't seen any recommendations from the prosecutors yet. Um, and I haven't seen their pre-sentencing report either. Um, so that has not been filed publicly as far as I know. When it is, I'll be uh, bringing that to you guys as well. So lastly, I want to say that the judge, the only group that the judge should be listening to are the victims. Okay, not the prosecutor's recommendation should also be based on what the victims want. So the prosecutor should discuss um, the case as they've done before with the victims and ask them what, what they think a fair uh, prison sentence for Gillian Maxwell would be. And whatever they say, that should be the recommendations um, of the prosecutors to the judge. And I think the judge should also place more emphasis on listening to the victims here than whatever Gillette Maxwell has to say, because she's the criminal, okay? Look, Dana, whose side are you on? The victims. So um, we'll see what happens. I think the judge is more likely to err on the side of what the prosecutors and the uh, probation department says. I think 20 years is a bit too low. I think the number 25 sounds good. OK, and the only reason I say that is because I don't think she's an ongoing threat to other people right now. OK, she committed crimes with Jeffrey Epstein. To be fair, she didn't go on to find another rich guy and do the same thing. If she did, that's a pattern and I would be calling for a much higher sentence. OK, but she she committed crimes with a specific person, Jeffrey Epstein. He's no longer here. So there's they're right when they say that she's no longer an ongoing threat. OK, there was a time when I thought that she was, but I no longer think that I, I don't think like there's no evidence to conclude that. Right. Because she didn't go uh, after Jeffrey Epstein. She didn't go to another guy and do the same thing. There's no evidence that she did that. So she was committing crime with in a very specific circumstance. Those circumstances are now gone. So I think 25 sounds good. I think a number around 25, 26, something like that, I could be happy with that. But it's not about me. Like I said, the only people that matter here are the victims. They're the ones who should determine and have a say in what the uh, sentence should be. I think that's the fair way to go. OK. All right. So that's all I got to say for this video. We'll see what happens in a couple of weeks uh, when we get more information. I'll be making more videos and I'll look into that so-called assassination attempt that Gillian Maxwell's lawyers recently claimed. It's probably BS, but I'll look into it anyways. And I'll report to you guys uh, in another video. And with that being said, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos and share this video with other people who care about objective legal analysis of uh, developing cases. And and if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below and your support will be much appreciated. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. As always, peace. 2099 in Mega City One. 800 million people, every one a potential criminal. Roving armed judges keep the peace. Pulse in the name of the law. Toughest of them all is Judge Dredd. He's back, fitters. After a desperate mercy dash across the cursed earth, Judge Dredd has returned to Mega City One. They said it was a suicide mission, but he looks pretty alive to me. This is some parade. In the cavalcade, Dredd is joined by the much revered Chief Judge Goodman. Alongside him, the unsmiling gaze of Deputy Chief Judge Caligula. Yo, Judge Dredd, can you give me a smile, please? How'd you like five years, creep? Things have changed since you left, Dredd. Nothing changed in this city, Chief Judge. It just stinks more. Hmm, you should know, Dredd. You've spent half your life in the gutter. Watch your mouth, Cal. You spent half your life in diapers. Since his return just five hours ago, Judge Dredd has already arrested eight perpetrators. Come on, you old bag. Give me your first. Rapid meathead. Oh, that's nine perpetrators. It sure is good to have him back.